Red blue panels and Mario make an appearance in tons of different courses throughout the franchise. They are, well, red and blue panels or platforms that flip positions either when you jump or on a beat or when you do some kind of action or spin like in Mario Galaxy. They can confuse the player by shifting the level floor up on you, especially when your mind is distracted with something else like dodging an attack or getting a star. I wanted to see how easily we can make something like this in Game Builder Garage and that's what we're going to do today. Spoiler alert, it is actually very easy. I threw together a few of the panels that we're going to set up today on this galaxy background and it's looking pretty good. And if you make a game with these and try it on your own, even though you know the platform is going to flip, sometimes it still trips you up when you're planning your jumps in your head and then the floor just changes all of a sudden and it's kind of cool. We're starting out as usual with our basic player setup. We have the left stick controlling the character movement and the right stick controlling the camera with the Z offset. We have our button press set to jump for now and we're going to start by making the base of the red blue platform. That's going to be a sphere. We're going to set it so that it is only visible with a connection point of center center. That's going to be the pivot point that we shift our platform around. Then we're going to add another basic shape with a connection point of X negative center so that it attaches its bottom to the right side of the sphere. I'm going to size it to three on the X and Z axis so that it is a perfect square platform. And then I'll adjust the Y height till it looks right for my game. We'll make it so that it's movable, solid and visible. Then we're going to add the hinge that we'll use to actually move this object around the sphere. We'll use a Z hinge. Since Z is forward and back, you can imagine something rotating around a forward back pole, which is what we're looking for. Then we'll connect the three things together, the sphere, to the Z hinge, to the box, and move it somewhere where it can freely rotate. Then we're going to get our jump button, which is currently set to while press so that we can control the height of the jump, and we're going to duplicate it because we want an on press version for our logic. We'll add a flag and an AND note on. The button will turn on the flag, and if the flag is on and the button is pressed, the flag will go off. We're doing this like usual to create a simple on-off switch. Then we'll connect that to a counter and a NOT note on. The flag being on will count up, and the flag being off or NOT on will count down. The counter is going to hold our timing. We're going to switch it to range and pick any range that has a total of 60 units because at one frame per second, I want a full rotation of the platform from left to right to take one second. In my case, I just did negative 30 to positive 30. Then we'll take out a map so that our counter can interface better with the hinge. We'll match the input range on our map to the count range on the counter, negative 30 to positive 30 in my case. And then our output range will be negative 180 to 0. Negative 180 is the platform all the way turned to the left, and 0 is it turned to the right in its original state. And immediately, you can see how well this works out. Whenever we press the jump button, the platform flips and completes a full flip in one second. Then we're going to add two textures, one red and one blue, and we can change the texture face that these appear on. One Y negative and one Y positive, and then we can just connect them to our platform. You can also add another texture to the sides. And so we have the basic setup of our red blue panel. You can also change the output that makes the panel switch to anything else you want. You can make it go on beat like it does in some games or when you do another action. The real issue when it comes to creating red blue panels in Game Builder Garage is placing them so that they lock up together in a good grid. One way you can do that is by making a ruler set of platforms. Take your original platform, make a copy of it, and then place it at the center of a sphere, place another one to the right, and then place another sphere at the center of that second platform. That's a good rule of thumb for spacing your blocks out so that they match up perfectly. And then you can just attach the output from the map and the texture nodons to make them look exactly the same. Now, a lot of times there's alternating red blue panels that will keep the same color, but switch on different beats or go from right to left instead of left to right. So to do that, we're going to copy our textures over and we're going to swap the texture faces that they show up on. We'll also make a quick switched counter by copying the counter and map node on and just switching the inputs. Now the flag will count down and the knot will count up. All you do then is switch out the map input on your hinge and switch out the textures to this new alternate set. And now you have red blue panels that can either be on the same timed left and right swing or they can be offset to mess with your player even more. 
So this was a simple build that just takes a little bit longer to set up at the end because it can be complicated to compose on the programming screen. I've actually seen a few cool levels that have a version of this already done, and it's nice to see how easily you can implement some basic platforming tools in Game Builder Garage.